So, hi, Samantha. Hi, how are you doing? I am doing good, and how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm excited to do this video. <laughs> so, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> okay, great. I have some questions. I made some questions in my book, you know, my journal, right? I have some questions. There are some questions I want to ask for persons who I know who are interested in coming to Canada and going to Nova Scotia. And these questions that I'm asking you, I want the real, honest, raw answer. Like, I don't want to hear the same thing that they hear on YouTube. I want the experience. You know, the yard, the jumping, and you're there and you experience it. I want that type of answer for all my viewers. People always ask me this question. If you're interested in coming to Canada and you decide you want to go to Nova Scotia or New Brunswick, how did you come up with the answer to say you're definitely going to Nova Scotia? Why did you pick Nova Scotia? Well, to be honest with you, <laughs> when I was looking around, I chose Nova Scotia mainly because of the cost of studying here. And that is the honest truth. When I was researching, I am always somebody who would prefer to study in Toronto because, you know, it's the big city. It's when you talk about Canada, you can't talk about Canada without talking about Toronto. So that was my main priority. But then when I look at the cost to study in Toronto for two years and only being able to work 20 hours at that time, it would have been too expensive and it would have been above my budget. So I just went on YouTube and I looked for top five cheapest schools to study in Canada. And to my surprise, my school was second on that list. And I was like, hey, well, this looks like something that I can work with. And as such, I'll just run with the school. And I went and I did my research about the school. They offered the program that I wanted to study. And the reviews were really good. And I was like, okay, well, Nova Scotia it's going to be. <laughs> but to be honest with you, before I even think about my school, which is Cape Breton University, I initially um, went and I applied to Nova Scotia Community College. Right. And... Yeah, but you know, when you start in this whole process, you have to do proper, proper research. And that's something that I didn't do because when I applied, I realized I applied for the wrong program, which is like um like a certificate, like it's below a degree. So I had to re go again and I reapplied because Nova Scotia did not offer the program, the, um, a postdoc program in what I wanted to do for two years. So, and I re ended up at the Cape Breton University. Guys, you should go and check out that school. It's really awesome. And uh, you, there are lots of programs that they offered. And you can get any information you want out there. So that's my reason for choosing Nova Scotia. Okay. When you said you applied first for University of Nova Scotia, right? The community college, what's the name? Nova Scotia? Nova Scotia Community College. Yes, when I was doing my research too, that school came up because their prices, you cannot beat those prices. But while doing that research, I realized that a lot of the courses that they offered were college certificates, diplomas, and especially when you have a bachelor's already, guys, you have to bear in mind that whatever it is that you're applying to in Canada, it cannot be below what you have. It has to be the same or above. So, in short. That's something she learned along the way and you can get this here before you go ahead and apply. So it was the cost, right? It was the cost. Yes, cost. <laughs> so I asked that question why Nova Scotia just to, you know, warm up the room. But let's dig, dig into the deeper question. Tell me, honestly speaking, since moving to Nova Scotia, what are some of the regrets that you've had since moving there and i want to say maybe give two positive things also of nova scotia that you know is better than other provinces my only regrets of coming to nova scotia is that it is much smaller and it's i'm not gonna say the entire nova scotia because i know like halifax is a bit more populated but like nova scotia sydney where i'm at it's the population is like only a million um people here and uh, most of the things are like a little bit far away. Like when I say far, it's like within probably 30 minutes to an hour, depending on where you go and what, what you want to get. So the transportation system, it sucks. Like when I say sucks, it's, it's real bad 
because you have buses like on my route, the bus runs every hour. And I can remember one morning standing at the bus stop, waiting on the bus to go to my go to school for my nine o'clock class. And then the bus went by and it didn't stop and it had out of service which means the bus was full. You can see the people standing because they have certain amount of numbers that they cannot exceed it. And uh, I was, I missed my class because I was unable to get another bus until one hour time. So I am from Jamaica and uh, yes, it is not perfect, uh, but uh, we don't have this thing where bus comes every hour. You can get bus at, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm not even gonna talk about bus because you know, probably because I wasn't taking the bus while I was there. But nonetheless, if I was supposed to in a situation where I had to take the bus, then it wouldn't be that difficult. So the bus systems, like a lot of students complaining to student union about this whole thing. And I think that was one of my biggest challenge. So what are you that based on the law is based on where you're at? Because maybe they'll say in Halifax, maybe they get buses more yeah. So give me something else. Give me something else. Because if I can find a counter to it, it's not really a regret. Right, people? Exactly. It's not really a regret because it is based on where I'm, where I'm living. The cost of living there. I know Nova Scotia is among one of the lowest paying minimum wage. If you didn't know, now you know it is among one of the lowest paid minimum wages in Canada. Right? And when I was doing my research, this was one of the reasons I personally was turned out from Nova Scotia. I noticed that most of the jobs that they had there, it was more of low skilled type of work, right? And being a professional coming from Jamaica, um, I want jobs that are high skilled, high paying. What type of jobs can you get in Nova Scotia? Can you get good paying jobs that pays above the minimum wage? or most of the jobs that you find there are just flat minimum wage. As in British Columbia, even though you have minimum wage jobs, you find a lot of jobs pay more than minimum wage here. And I think minimum wage is like $15.65, but you will get jobs that pay $20, $21, right? And then you have the minimum wage jobs. So in Nova Scotia, do you get jobs above the minimum wage or just the flat minimum wage? What is the skilled jobs like? Isn't that something that is an issue? Seeing that you're a professional also from Jamaica. All right. One of the things that I tell persons, so like my job, it's a low skilled job. And for somebody who is in a professional field for quite a number of years, it was so depressing to the point that I was like, okay, like, is there any accounting positions like entry level? Because most of the jobs that you've seen is like Walmart, Sobeys, Atlantic Superstore, Subway, and all of that. And I can remember one night I was at work, we were both closed and cleaning up, and I looked in the mirror and I laughed, and I was like, <laughs> I can't believe I gave up my job in Jamaica and come here doing this kind of job. And then you know what? I reminded myself of wanting that sometimes in life you have to start over and it doesn't mean anything. Because, um, a lot of person doesn't want to start from scratch, but today when you're starting from scratch, a couple years from now, two, three years from now, you will realize that the decision that you took to be here worked it after all. Like you will find, um, like my friend, she just came here probably four days ago. She got a job in Sydney um and that job is paying her 20 dollars an hour and which i found like i was like oh are you for real like 20 dollars <laughs> because you already see those kind of jobs here and uh, like look there are lots of call centers um call center jobs and they pay between 16 and 18 and any other jobs that pay above 20 dollars is mostly like jobs that you can find online that you can work from home so and the job it is very complicated here like i can tell you there are a lot of students there like a whole lot of students so it is really really competitive in finding jobs and uh, it can be very stressful and one of the things that i will tell viewers right now don't come to canada fully broke <laughs> like make sure you have some money because it is rough and you don't want to be here all stressed out so yeah wow <laughs> um, your friend finding a job for this tool like yay to her because <laughs> that's a good time that's a pastime and that's what a lot of persons really hope for 
but everybody's situation is different. So I want you to give my subscribers the insights, like how did she get that job so quickly, the four days? Was it because of your guidance? What? Like, how did she get that in four days? When she came here, she was like, unlike me, when I came here, I was so relaxed. I didn't walk not one day to a four job. I was just home one day and my large and was like, someone to get dressed, we're going on the road to drop off a few resumes. She brought me to four places and that was the only time I went job hunting. Um, and that was like two weeks after I was there and like four days after dropping off my resume, I got the call to do the interview. And the same day I did the interview, I got through with the job and then the storm came after and everything. But with that being said, with her, I was like, okay, don't be relaxed because you are here and you know that you have bills to take care of at home. So you are aware of the Can Canadian Job Bank and you are aware of Career Beacon, indeed. So I told her about all those places. And that one particular job that she applied for, she saw it all three places and she applied for them on all three <laughs> platforms. Mm -hmm. And when she called me, she said, Sam, I was like, yeah. She said, guess what? I think she said, I have an interview tomorrow. And I was like, where? And when she told me, I was like, oh, that's nice. And I said to you, I said, do you know what, Nat? You're really good at what you do. And I think if anything is going to stop you from getting that job, it would be your schedule because there are going to be a lot of persons who could be available to work the 40 hours while we are students, which kind of make it difficult. But just go give it your best shot. And if it is yours, it cannot be for anybody else. So you have to just actively search in. And, send, and make sure that you are sending out applications as soon as possible. As you see the job post, just go ahead and apply. Was it like a low skill job or a job in your field or what was so, it? Um, it's an entry level, it's an office administrative job. Okay. So um, she did something like that in the past, so it's that kind of job. And okay. even myself, I got interviewed like two times, like for a job that was paying like $28. Oh, okay. um, yeah, it was just like inter level, but my schedule and the, I remember when I did the interview and everything and they were like, I am so impressed and I really, really want to offer you this position, but your timing, your schedule is not going to work with us. And they were like, they even said to me that when you're able to work at least 30 hours a week, you can always reach out to us. So, which is good. There are opportunities. You just have to look and everybody blessing is different. So not because somebody shared their story on YouTube saying that they face challenges finding jobs or because when I was coming here, I was told that persons were here like for four or five months without jobs. And I came and I looked once and I got a job in probably three weeks. So you know you just have to pray and have faith and trust God. Wow. So guys, that's the thing. Um <laughs> it can be four weeks, it can be one day, and it can be five months. What are some of the types? I, I'm still trying to get that, the, the, the skill level of the job that are mostly advertised in the area where you're at. Because is it that it's mostly just entry level? When you go on these job sites, do you see like a lot of jobs that are um, on it? When you're looking or do you see maybe 10 and you can apply for all 10? And then you go back, you probably see one new one. What is that like when you're job? Oh, when you're searching, you see it like a lot of jobs. And but like I said earlier, it's the most low skill jobs. And these jobs are like sales associate, like call center agents. And right. so a lot of low skills, but for the high skill. For the high jobs now, it's either really low or really high. So it's like more like management positions. So like finding jobs in the middle is really competitive and you barely like only few of those that you will see. So for persons who don't have the mindset of doing low skill jobs, yeah. then <laughs> yeah. Don't go to Nova Scotia. Yeah, I think you finally answered something nice. I wanted to get out because I think I say this to my viewers all the time. Um, if you're coming to Canada and you are someone that is a, a professional and you're not in nursing, you're, let's just put nursing out there. If you're not in nursing or the medical field per se, and you're in, you're like an accountant, you're like an HR representative, those type of skilled jobs are an engineer. I would not, I know the school fees look nice in Nova Scotia, but I would not recommend it because those high skill jobs, they are fewer than low skill jobs. And if you're not willing to work 
low skill jobs for a time T before you find that nice job, then Nova Scotia might not be the best place for you. But otherwise though, it has a lot of other benefits that's that are a plus. If you have a f- coming to Canada, they are not coming here broke. They have some money and they are not necessarily looking for the cheapest possible school, but they can afford a little bit more than the cheap. And they would like when they are going to school also or when they finish school, they can get a professional high skill job off the bat. Right? Would you recommend Nova Scotia or would you tell them, hey, since you have that money, maybe just go to Ontario or so, definitely, definitely like my top two provinces <laughs> are <laughs> definitely Ontario and Manitoba. Like those provinces, because you know what? I wanted to apply for a school over in Man- Manitoba too, but the application fee was like $200. I was like, hell no, I'm not paying $200 for application fee. But there are a lot of jobs there. I even, when I was sending out applications online, there are a few persons that reach out to me asking if I'm willing to relocate. <laughs> so there are a lot of job opportunities there and Ontario too. The cost of living are high there, but their minimum wage is also high. So it kind of equates by itself. So I would, and then if I had known that the law would, would change about how many hours I can work as an international student, I would be definitely be heading, well, be in Ontario or Manitoba, like honestly speaking. Um, yeah, so there you have it, guys. She's in Nova Scotia. She, she said it. I'm in BC and I normally say that's one of the reasons I didn't go to Saskatchewan. I didn't go to Nova Scotia. You know, yes, the um, cost of living is lower, but when it comes to your earning potential, it's still going to be lower compared to others. Because even the $28 that you're saying that, um, like a job for here, you can get cleaning jobs in British yeah. Columbia, $25, $28, right? That seems like nothing here. So if you want a higher earning capacity, it's better to move here. Just that, yeah, the cost of living is high, but you're going to look in the market to find the lower cost of living areas. Thank you. I did a video, you know, why I left Jamaica, right? And this question is a question I want to ask you as a professional because you've been in your field way more years than I have been in my field. I just did like four years and something. And you've been a veteran in your field for years and you left Jamaica. My question is, after coming here, you know, people say, oh, Canada, Canada is nice, Canada is that. You know, would you would you go back to Jamaica after you're finished to get back a nice professional job, high paying, or... Why? What was the reason you left Jamaica? Those two in one. I didn't just come to Canada, Canada because I wanted to come to school. So the answer to your question about if I would go back to Jamaica after I completed my studies, the answer is no. It's a capital N and a capital O. Absolutely not. Maybe to visit, but not to live. <laughs> I'm not being ungrateful, but let me put it this way. Like, Jamaica is a beautiful place. A lovely place to live. It is full of vibes and everything, and uh, trust me, every time I am, since I'm here, I have been comparing to say, after all, Jamaica is not that bad because Jamaica would do this. In Jamaica, we could do that. But we, Jamaica is lacking opportunities for growth, and uh, I always tell myself, I have a son, and I want to offer him, like a good life and a safe environment to live. I am going to say this um, with no apologies. Jamaica is not one of the safest places to live right now. And uh, I am here and I see I left my work like 12 midnight and I walk home all by myself for like 15 minutes. I would never do that in Jamaica. Like I would, I don't even want to walk to my gate to close the gate at night. So it is like, it's like a mindset. When I watch the news and I see the amount of killings and all of that, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen here. But Jamaica is like a dot on the map and it is way smaller than these countries. And a lot of crimes happen in Jamaica and there is sufficient evidence for to persecute some of these persons and whatever. And people just walk free, scratch free. You have the bigger people like investors and post developers and who is supposed to be high in society. 
and supposed to be credible and uh, I emptied my savings in 2019 and I paid down on a house in somewhere in Jamaica and I cancelled and up until today's date I cannot receive my money and those same developers continuing to build buildings we went through we got lawyers and nothing came out of it so we lost our money and these are kind of things that kind of discourage people from investing in Jamaica and staying in Jamaica and I will never I will visit, vacate, do vacation in Jamaica, but not to live. Yes. I don't even want to visit to do vacation. Exactly. I wish I <laughs> yeah. I know Jamaica. I believe, you know, Jamaica nice, yes. But yeah. I see the world. I want to see the rest of the world. People want to know about Scotia because they say, oh, you can get permanent residence easier. Have you researched that yet or see where Nova Scotia can help you? getting your permanent residence here in Canada easier? The only thing that I researched prior to coming here was the AIP program, which is the four Atlantic um, provinces. I'm not sure of what part we're going to look at. Uh, I was telling myself, but for now, it's just cool. And then I'll do my research after because, you know, you might research now and then by the time information, keep, things keep on changing. So, but definitely the AIP program was one of the things that caught by, oh, it's easier to get your PR in the Atlantic provinces. I can tell you, the AIP program is a great pathway and it is only if you go to a school that is publicly funded, please know the school must be a public school, it must not be private, that you can use your school and it must be a program of two years. And it's not like British Columbia, where in British Columbia you have to study something in science, technology, engineering, or mathematics to get the international school pathway, no. You can do absolutely anything. It can be busy, it doesn't matter in Nova Scotia, which I think is a great plus. But here in BC, we are, it's like, the reason I promote BC so much is because, for me, if it's not BC, it would have been Ontario. I prefer Alberta over Ontario. But the thing is, Alberta is so cold, right? <laughs> and in terms of the skill levels for jobs, it's still on the lower side compared to Ontario. But in BC, if you're coming to British Columbia, I always say this, please have a background in STEM because the jobs here, when you are STEM educated, it's endless. It is, it is endless. There are so many opportunities. And even for the PNP pathways, like from you come here from day one if you get a job offer in stem you can get pnp nomination from day one if you have that job offer and bc again is one of the only provinces like if you're in jamaica and you get a job offer from british columbia they have a pathway that's the tech pathway that's so fast within two weeks they claim right you can get that nomination and get that open work permit to apply for your open work permit to move to canada as a permanent resident and as a worker so i love bc right <laughs> that's something you can bear in mind so if you're of the tech background and if not and if you're a business also you can come to bc but business is going to be more competitive like in Nova Scotia is competitive, but you have more opportunities here. So those are my questions. And now I'm going to let Samantha ask me any question that she wants to ask me. While I'm here, and like I mentioned earlier, the persons there are so friendly. I've traveled on work and travel program before to the United States and like I faced a lot of risk them and all of that so i want you to like today i was standing at a gas station waiting on a bus and a lady stopped by me and my friend and she was like um hi she's like can i have a minute and i was like sure and she was like um i would like to give you guys a christmas gift and i was like oh she was like she handed me a box of chocolate and an envelope or envelope whatever it is <laughs> And when I reached home and I opened that envelope, it was a Sobe's gift card, a Sobe's $30 gift card. And I was like, oh my God, you don't see that much. I've never, I've been to the United States like probably seven times and I've never experienced such kindness from anyone there. So what are the people like in BC? Are they friendly? Are they racist? How are they? <laughs> 
<laughs> I, this is where BC get the lower end for me. And um, let's just say BC is big though. So I'm just speaking in terms of my experience in the lower mainland part of BC. It's not that people are unfriendly, but they ain't friendly either. I did a video about being black in Canada, what it felt like to be in BC as a black person. I won't lie to you, it is lonely. In BC here, if you're sitting on the bus, I'm being honest with you, people will not sit beside you because you're black, right? And the thing is, BC has a lot of immigrants. That's the difference. You see, when you when you think about the rest of Canada, I know how they say Canadians are nice. Yes, Canadians are nice. So when I move, when I leave out of the lower mainland in BC, in the lower mainland in BC, you have a lot of immigrants. But when I go on the outskirts, like on the outside for different things, then you see a lot of white people and they are friendly. They are nice, right? They will say, hi, you will get the Canadian experience. But on a day-to-day -day basis, on the people that you're going to see, if you're going to stay in the lower mainland area, they are not going to be, hey, they're not going to be nice. And then when you have tourists that comes from America and they come and you're on the train or something, they'll sit beside you. They will start up a conversation and they'll be like, oh, I'm from America. Or, oh, I'm from Montreal. Or, oh, I'm from somewhere else in Canada and we are visiting Vancouver. You know, and they'll have conversations with you. So BC, where I'm at in the lower mainland, it depends. Because if I go in the tourist areas, they are all, they are nice. They are nicer. They'll try to ask, what are the locals doing here? Are you a local? They'll ask, ask the question. If I go on the outskirts of the lower mainland and you have the white people, they will be like, hey, hi, they are nice. But the lower mainland with us immigrants, like when I say immigrants, I mean black, black people are few though. So we are few here. When you see another black person here, you're like, hi, you're still in God. Yeah, because we are so few, right? And the other immigrants of different complexions, all of them, they are they are not, it's not that they are mean, but everybody is busy going. It's like you're in New York City and you just fast pace. But, so, so just a quick question, are there other Jamaicans there? Like, is there a lot of Jamaicans there now? Yeah, there are. There are a lot of other Jamaicans here, but you have to find them. We are not like, because when you see another black person, you can't assume that they're Jamaican. So <laughs> you have to wait to hear the accent and then you hear it and, okay, it's not Nigerian. Then, you know, you, when you hear a Caribbean accent, you know, you're going to be like, oh, hi, Wagwan, you know, but yeah. But yes, that's the same. That's the same here. Not a lot of Jamaicans like, it's so far it's seven jamaicans and all seven are persons who we help like three three of them just came up since recently one of them was here before myself so we are people that met in jamaica's tour group and we came here since we're here we met only three other jamaicans and every black every black person uh, we saw we were like okay let's let's wait until they say something if they are jamaican or but most of them are nigerians yeah, but you guys should create a group because here BC is big, like it's like it's city life, it's it's big. So it's it's hard you find other black persons through networking through school activities, sometimes church. I realize I find a lot of Jamaicans in church. That's where I find most of the Jamaicans there in church. Do you regret going to BC and would you choose another province? So guys, honestly speaking, if I regret moving to BC, no, I don't regret moving to BC. One of the things I know about BC that I don't like, for example, but I knew this even before coming here, like the housing price, it's ridiculous, not ridiculous, ridiculous. It's crazy. But I was told that BC means bring cash. It is not for poor people, it's rich people. Vancouver, British Columbia is for rich people, it's for the celebrities of Hollywood. It's a mini Hollywood. So when I see houses being sold for a million dollars and two million dollars, I'm like, for what, right? But it's not for the working class. They do have more affordable houses because if you look, you can find more affordable houses but you'll find it maybe for around 600 700 thereabout for affordable 
But at the same time, you have to look good. And when you do find them, they do need a TLC, tender loving care. And you have to, well, for me, I have to think, I'm like, okay, is this worth it when you can go to Alberta and get something of the same size for 300, 400? Why pay the extra 200? You know what I mean? When yeah. and get something like that in another province cheaper. So that's the only regret I have with British Columbia. But I would not move. I will not move. I will, I would rather rent and pay my expensive rent and buy a house in another province and rent that house. Honestly, I'd probably, I'd rather, because you see, when you're working in BC and you're making a certain amount of money and your credit value is high, you can use that same credit instead of buying it here in BC, buy it in two other different provinces and get probably two houses, right? Mm -hmm. Buy the rent in here, but you can rent out those. So I don't regret it. I, I love BC. I really do. I've fallen in love with this province so much since I've moved here. I hate the weather right now, but all things fair compared to the rest of Canada. Minus two degrees is nothing. I was told that's baby, baby weather. Like that, that's nothing. And I'm like, I'm freezing, right? I'm cold, but I can't complain. It's better than the rest of Canada. Um, in terms of job opportunities, I did a video about this, how I, I could change survival jobs. Every day, as one giving me a problem, bye, I'm not staying. <laughs> Bye, because there are so many jobs. There are so many jobs. You can literally get up, leave this one, and tomorrow you get another job, right? But sometimes, like I say, if you're new and you come in here, you have to learn the techniques, how to get jobs fast, how to, because there are different seasons for certain jobs. So that matters here. The seasons affect the types of jobs that you'll get. So no, like when I tell you everything, and then when it comes to professional jobs, professional when the government said guys this is the part why me love bc and i'm glad i chose bc and i didn't go with nova scotia or i didn't go with saskatchewan or alberta this is why i chose bc when it comes to professional jobs they are here especially in my field engineering um when the government said 40 hours that students can work 40 hours <laughs> Stop applying to survival jobs. Mr. Survival jobs, you ain't seeing me no more. It's time to use my degree. And fortunately for me, I there are so many jobs. Sometimes I just tired to apply to jobs because there are so many. So I did get some. You no, know, we decided to move on. But I also got a lot of interviews. Like I want to <laughs> my interviews, right? And then in the end, I get more than one offers. And I went with. The one that suited me the best. Your school, you, your classes goes up a little bit later and they also offer classes on Saturday based on our conversation, right? Yes, and Sundays too. But what some people um, would want to do is to make sure that they are researching because you know what, sometimes it's not even about finding the job. It's about the availability. Your availability has a lot to do with it because if I, so for instance, if I could choose all my classes at night because my school, the last class begins at four and finishes at six, 10, 6, 30, they're about to. So um, most of the professional jobs, one person like from Monday to Friday from probably nine to five or nine to four. Yeah. And if you have classes three, four days a week, then those jobs will not work for you. Which means you're gonna have to take one of the low level jobs that would work with best with your schedule. So that is one of the disadvantages. Yes. Um, persons, if persons have the option like you, who can set their class for later in the night, and worse, and if your transportation system is good where you are located, located, then that would also be another plus for you in finding a professional job. Unlike me, <laughs> I am not going to be able to find a professional job until at least my third semester, because my third semester I'll be only doing three courses, and I can do all of those in one day. I can just pick everything in one day. And I would have a better availability to find something suitable in my field. Because really, actually, like I said earlier, like I've been, I think I did about 10 interviews, like, like reasonable paying jobs. It's not the best, but reasonable. But my availability is what missed me up. I remember I did an interview at all this one place and the, the manager was like so impressed too. He was like, let me tell you something. If it wasn't for your availability, and worse, we need somebody for Tuesday, and you're not available on Tuesday. 
But let me tell you something. The next interview you go in, <laughs> once they're available, it's good you're going to get that job. And so it's, it, it has a, a lot to do with the availability. Yeah, but that's a plus too. For in British Columbia, where I'm at, like, guys, this is a plus. This is a thing with BC. Like, the school system here, like, because it's a, I guess it's um the city life, it's more fast paced. So it's um, catered to you. So at my school, University of Canada West, we have classes on Sundays, Fridays, starting from 8 a.m. in the morning, going right back until even 10 p.m. at night. The last class, I believe, is ends at 10. So if you're even a busy person or you want to work, you can select your classes around your schedule. So I did that. Once the government said 40 hours, immediately I changed my, my, my timetable and I ensured that my classes were at 9 because my availability matters. And when it even comes to getting regular jobs, like survival jobs here in city, your availability matters. So um, I normally put my classes based on what would be best for those jobs. So that's something big on British Columbia is a plus. I love BC, the only thing is the housing price, but BC is the place to be. What I'm just going to say is for those, for the viewers who are, or who will be watching this video, is to ensure that you do proper research and not because Kayan say, oh, she loves BC, there are a lot of job opportunities. Things are not going to work for everybody the same way. Your blessing is different from everybody else's blessing. Please do your research and if you have little funds, then BC would definitely not be the place to start out with because, come on, you have to be realistic. You might go to BC and you don't have like a lot of funds and you're not able to pay your rent. You don't want to be in a foreign country, not able to pay your rent, wondering where your next tuition fee is coming from. Worse if you're going to be there by yourself without family and all of that. So you need to look at the pros and the cons of the different provinces and then you can make your decision from there. So that's what I wanted to add. Yeah. Well said. If you didn't come here with your money in your pocket, do you think you could survive? When I came, based on how fast I find a job, I would be able to pay my rent and buy my food. But I I am not so young. I have responsibilities in Jamaica. So if I had, if I came here with no money, then it would be too much stress. And I don't handle stress well. I don't like depression. So before I came here, I ensured that I paid my tuition for the first year. So I don't have to be worrying. And then when I was doing my research and based on how difficult they said it was to find a job here, then you don't want you don't want to see the red light, the red flags and still like, you know, it's like sit fire and walk through fire. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure you're on top of your team. But just so, um, to stop you there, like you say you don't want to stress. I came to BC and I carried my money, right? And I didn't want to stress, but bear in mind, you might come here, pay your one-year tuition, because I did that. You might even pay your two-year tuition, right? Or you might even have money to take you out. But then the thing is, when you come here, and certain expectations that you might have had. That right? is where I was just about to go that's to. <laughs> oh, two. And then yes. the the well, depression, those things will stress. It's like you have a certain experience. Your expenses is more than what your income. And even me, the thought of seeing my bank account dwindling down and I'm not, that's it. Like every month when I'm supposed to pay my rent, I, 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 it's, like, it's like I go crazy. Like, exactly. So. Exactly. Guys, when I say go crazy, it's crazy. Like these are things that you have to, like it's things where nobody talks about but it, it will affect your mental health and you have to be prepared when you come here. Right now, I'm even employed to this place as a casual worker and they call me when they feel like And Every time they call me, I tell them I'm not available, right? I didn't realize what I was signing up for, that casual means that we call you when we feel like, right? So if you're here and you don't have money, you're going to have to be taking up jobs like that. For me, I could easily um, say, no, I can't do this. It makes no sense, right? Because you can't just call me one day off this week and then next week you don't call me again and then maybe you feel like another week you call me one day. That doesn't pay my bills, right? 
So for me being here, like yes, I might yeah, I have the money in my savings and whatever, but just seeing that money leaving your bank account and knowing knowing that yes i have the potential to go get a job eventually but you don't see that job yet and then for me i have certain standards i'm like no i'm not dropping my standards you know what i mean so that that will drive you crazy and we're not trying to fear anybody because if anybody out there who is thinking about taking this route or having this journey I definitely will encourage you to do so. And don't be afraid, based on the information that we're sharing, it's our personal experience. Yours might be different. Just make sure you just plan your way out and plan it properly and go for your dream. Whatever you want in life, you just work towards it. Exactly. So. Just plan, plan and work towards it. Because even when I, when I was here and I wasn't working for a bit, I was still planning my way out because you can't just sit and keep your hands folded. Yeah, I, I do you know times I cried for different reasons because I see my money leaving my account and yeah. me love my money. Me love my money. Exactly so. <laughs> me love my money. And exactly. when, you, when you see it leaving, um, it hurts. But at the end of the day, I know the hope, I know the dream, and I know it's possible. So yes, you might be coming here and you're going to have some rough times. Maybe different things are going to get you down. It's going to get you down. But that doesn't matter because there's light. There's always, there's light at the end of the tunnel. There's yeah, so, yeah, that's true. So, they just have to just know that, you know, you're starting from scratch. Yeah, you might be working in the at BOJ, you might be earning 10 million a year or five or two or three. I know you're going to be working to sweep the floor or whatever. But as long as you're being able to pay your bills at the end of the month. Uh, you know, thing though, when I was coming here, I was of the mentality that I was going to start from scratch, sweeps, floors, wash dishes. I never had a problem with that. But what I did not know was that some of these employers would not be giving you the hours that you wanted. Yeah. That was, you know, no, because nobody spoke about that. Nobody spoke about the fact that yeah, you have 20 hours and employers will probably still look at you and give you 10, 15 hours. And then you have five hours to spare and you're planning on that money. You're planning on that other five hours of work. And they already have it in your calculation. Well, yes. yes, you only get 10, you only get 12. Or... At my workplace, you have persons on the schedule that gets only like four hours a week. And yeah. uh, like for me, like they're always like, no, is the good part because I get like, for this week, last between last week and this week, I work pretty good hours. And you have persons like, if somebody calls out sick, you have per persons who got like four hours and they don't call a person. They call me and I already got like probably 25 hours because it based on all you work. And uh, one thing I tell people here, if you're lazy, <laughs> this place ain't for you. You cannot be lazy because when you don't, when you think first people are not watching and talking, I listen when people are, when I'm at work, I listen. And I listen keenly. And you have to make sure that you're working. Don't follow anybody. See your people talking, let them talk. You don't join them. Because at the end of the day, you know what you know. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. Be aware of that always thing. Like, they literally don't give you much hours, some of them. And... I don't know why. Here in BC, I think they rather hire person. That's the difference with here in BC that I realize is different in Canada than the US. In the US, they'll work you. Um, so if you can work, they'll work you and give you all your overtime hours. Here, they rather not give you overtime. They rather hire somebody else to pick up the slack. They they don't want to give you overtime. Uh, These survival jobs. And that was something I had to get used to and I wasn't expecting. So they try not to give you, they try not to carry you close to your hours of availability. They try not to. Yeah. I think that's it for this video, guys. We tell you everything. We give you the complete scoop. We, we give it to you. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Don't forget to head over to Chilling with Sam. Go, go and subscribe to her channel. So you came from Ken Aldrich's channel. Go and subscribe. Go support her. 
and leave a like on the video share this video for anyone who wants to go to nova scotia and you're looking for a creator a black youtuber who talks about nova scotia life in nova scotia vlogs and other things in nova scotia check out her channel subscribe to her channel support us um i always say one way you can support a fellow um, person is by subscribing you're not losing anything when it's free subscribe share the video like it up thank you so much if you want guys you can leave some questions in the comment section and um we will answer it if if you want another video like this we can do it for you so just leave your comments there and let us know come on guys comment on the video comment comment that's how i know what you're thinking and how i can help so comment if you see it and if something she can answer i'm sure she'll answer so leave the comment if it's just even say thanks for sharing thank you that's how other persons see our videos and it goes viral and go global so leave a comment leave a like and share the video anyways this is where you say what good bye